Dunkleosteus has been widely considered one of the most interesting animals in the fossil record, at least for a lot of people with some passing familiarity with it. And that's because it was largely reconstructed as this 30 foot long behemoth of a fish, the first apex predator anywhere in the world that was swimming out in the oceans and eating whatever it wanted. However, last year there was a paper that suggested, hey, it probably wasn't 30 feet long, it was probably closer to 12 feet long. So instead of 10 meters, it was probably closer to something like 3 or 4 meters. This made some fans of paleontology a little bit upset, because no, it's supposed to be this big monster fish, and I will just say a 12 foot long fish is still a monster fish. I certainly wouldn't want to be swimming with it if it was that large. However, this paper now is by that same author that shrank it the first time and goes into even more detail about more data to be able to show, yeah, no, all of this lines up with it being between three and four meters, at least most of the time. Maybe if you could get larger, I'll talk about that later. To start, we're actually gonna look at some of those older papers where it discussed the OOL, or the orbit to operculum length. This is part of the skull and that's very well defined in fish. Essentially, everything behind the operculum is no longer the head, that's where the head ends. And there have been some more recent studies in modern mammals that have done similar things. Essentially, looking at the skulls of different mammals that are similar sizes, for example, you can look at certain breeds of cats like Maine Coons and certain types of foxes and their sizes overlap pretty well. But obviously their skull shape is very different. But if you measure from the eye to the back of the skull, they're pretty similar for animals of the same size or at least similar sizes. So it was essentially saying OOL in order to align with the measurements that were used in that paper, even if we were studying a different group. Now, he was able to find that the last part of that operculum, the last gill arch, does correlate really well with fish when you do that same kind of measurement, cutting up the rostrum, the snout of the animal, and being able to then apply it to the rest of the body to understand its length. And this is really important because these kinds of fish, like Dunkleosteus, are arthrodires. They're armored fish, and they're very well known for having very short snouts. This is really important because most of these measurements are just comparative. So you use something like a shark, which might have a much longer snout, and you just scale the shark's head up to the same size as Dunkleosteus. And then you go, hey, look, now this shark is 30 feet long. Therefore, Dunkleosteus must have been 30 foot long, despite the fact that they are not built the same really at all. Another reason for this kind of reconstruction in Dunkleosteus is because of some of its relatives that are better known from more fossils, or at least more complete fossils. These are mostly small animals that would have lived alongside reefs, and they were more anguiform, meaning essentially they're longer, they're more eel-like. And what that means is they were probably in and around reefs, moving through shallow water. Dunkleosteus wasn't doing that, it was swimming in the open ocean. It had no reason to be ribbon-like or eel-like. So it's not very likely that it would have been doing that exact same thing. That said, it also evolved to move into the open water separately from other fish, like sharks, so we shouldn't expect exactly the same body plan. Fortunately though, we do have some pretty decent fossils of Dunkleosteus, and some of its relatives too. So what this means is the researcher, Russell Engelman, was able to look at these bones and compare them to those other fish. And it turns out, yeah, they're basically all the same bones in similar orientations. However, there's some really important things we need to consider as we continue because it was more heavily armored. There was more fusion between these different bone sets, so it wasn't using them in exactly the same way. There's also the general body plan of fish, with their spine basically running down the middle, and that's really important when doing the reconstruction. Because these bones have been fossilized for over 300 million years, they're not all exactly in the right shape. So you have to do some retro deformation in order to understand what shape Dunkleosteus would have had in the fossil record when it was a living animal. Looking at these bones, it would have been particularly deep bodied, not wide bodied. When you think of something like a shark, especially things like a tiger shark, for example, you're gonna think of an animal that's more flat than it is tall. That's not the case with Dunkleosteus. It instead would have been deeper bodied and relatively narrow bodied. And that has some people questioning it because there's not anything really built like that today, but if you look at the fossil record, there are some animals that are built a little bit like that. For example, some ichthyosaurs were taller bodied than they were wide bodied. And there will be more on them and those comparisons in a little bit. Right now though, the reason we can say, yeah, it would have been deep bodied is because of things like the carneal process, a projection of bone inside the skeleton that would have jutted down in towards where the vertebral column would have been. That means that essentially this animal had to be deep so that you wouldn't have to have a spine that goes straight and then dips deeply around that and then goes straight again. 
that doesn't make a lot of sense. Instead, if it was deep bodied, the spine could just go straight across the body like you would expect. Additionally, these bones have the pectoral fenestra, which is where the pectoral fin would have shown up. And when you look at it, it's actually pretty far forward, and this is very similar to those ichthyosaurs. And even other pelagic fish, meaning that they're essentially going out into the open ocean, do have relatively far forward pectoral fins. So it's something we expect, even if it is a little bit more dramatic in Dunkleosteus. It's also a different body shape than those other fish, though, so it makes sense there would be some changes. If you squashed the skeleton, though, to make it whiter like a shark, those pectoral fins wouldn't really be able to actually exist because you would have fundamentally pinched closed that fenestra. There would have been no way for vessels and nerves and even muscle to get out to those fins. So it wouldn't be a useful adaptation for allowing these animals to actually succeed. This pectoral fin placement also makes a lot of sense when you're considering the overall length of Dunkleosteus if it is closer to three to four meters. That's because, sure, it's a little bit further forward, but it's well within the range that we would expect for most open ocean-going fish. There's also normally pretty good consistency on how far back the pelvic fins would be. And if you do that same math based on where we know the pectoral fins would have been in the overall length of the head, turns out, yeah, it lines up pretty well if Dunkleosteus was actually between three and four meters. I know I keep harping on that, but it's a lot of evidence that says, yeah, it's smaller than 10 meters significantly smaller. Based on that total length of the fish though, that also means the pelvic fins would have been pretty small. The pelvic girdle as a whole would have been very small. This means that essentially you are going to get a fish that very quickly rounds out into its tail. Large ocean-going animals tend to have these very rounded shapes, and sure, yes, Dunkleosteus, it is taller than most of these other ones. That's okay though, it's not related to those ones. You, again, should not expect exactly the same body plan. This kind of body shape is called thuniform, after the group thumini, which is all of the different kinds of tuna there are. So yeah, it's basically a tuniform shape, but with some slight differences because again, not related, but not really that outside of the realm of what you would expect. And this research extends beyond just Dunkleosteus. In fact, you can apply it to basically all of the arthrodires, with these different parts of how you should reconstruct them all existing simultaneously. And here's the figure, you can look at it and pause if you need to, but it's basically just saying, hey look, we can reconstruct these animals really accurately. So yeah, we can say with pretty good confidence that Dunkleosteus was mostly between three to four meters. Maybe a few on the super upper end could get a little bit above four meters, but that's pretty unlikely. And I say this very specifically because I know some of the comments I'm going to get. They're gonna talk about the Malin and Hone paper and how, hey, we could have actually had Tyrannosaurus rex be much larger than the largest known specimen. And that's because they're doing statistics and it's a very interesting paper, but it is not necessarily saying everything had a larger version out there. What they're saying is with the Tyrannosaurus rex fossil record, we have essentially a bell curve of growth, or at least maximum sizes for adults. The bell curve, we are very unlikely to find the peak parts of that. It's kind of like finding the fossil of someone the size of Andre the Giant. Almost nobody is his size. It's very unlikely we're going to find him, but if we found human skeletons, if some other species found human skeletons millions of years from now, they're gonna go, yeah, maybe they could get up to the size of Andre the Giant, but that is not going to be very common. And the thing with Dunkleosteus is, we have much better fossil records for Dunkleosteus with more specimens than we have for Tyrannosaurus rex and none of them are even approaching that kind of size of being close to five or six meters, let alone 10. So it's not particularly likely that it was that big. 